In this video, I want to go through a CFA level one exam style question on the logic behind M squared. Now, M squared is a specific uh, performance measure which is introduced in your um, portfolio management section of the curriculum in the same uh, reading as the CAPM, the Capital Asset Pricing Model. Once again, just like the trainer ratio, which I discussed in the previous video, this is introduced relatively late on in the reading. So there's a risk that you'll never get to it. And even if you get to it, you may not necessarily appreciate the logic behind it. Hence this question and this video. So if this is something you want to get right in the exam, do keep watching and let's get solving. Okay, this is the question which I want us to have a go at. The following performance information is available about three investment portfolios. The same portfolios X, Y and Z, which we had in the previous video on the trainer ratio. The return on the market portfolio is given, the standard deviation is given for that market portfolio and the risk free rate is given at um, or as 0.5%. Which portfolio offers the best performance as measured by M squared? M squared is a performance ratio or a performance metric which was derived by Franco Modigliani and his granddaughter Leah, Leah Modigliani, hence M squared because of the two Modiglianis. And I'm going to write out the um, formula for it. So M squared equals, and this is very easy to get wrong, so I'm going to say open bracket, the return on the specific portfolio that we are analyzing, so it's going to be X, Y, Z in just a moment, minus the risk-free rate of return times the standard deviation of the market portfolio divided by the standard deviation of the portfolio that we are analyzing, so that would be P in this case, minus the return on the market portfolio minus the risk-free rate. So a lot of stuff here to get wrong. And to be honest, the way I like to work with this one is not necessarily to remember the formula as such, but think about the underlying logic for it. Now, in order to get the underlying logic right, I'm going to make the or do the computation for the first one. So I'm going to do the computation in respect of portfolio X, and that's going to show you how this basically works uh, or what what it's trying to tell us so let's just plug in the numbers for x it's going to be the return on that portfolio so two percent minus the risk-free rate which is uh, over here stated as 0 0.5 multiplied by the standard deviation of this portfolio one and a half sorry of the market portfolio 1.8 over here 1.8 divided by 1.5, okay, and minus RM, mean minus RF, so the return on the market portfolio was 2.3, minus RF, the risk-free rate, 0 0.5. Okay, let's get the calculator out and see what this gives. I'm just quickly going to solve this on my, uh, on my phone, which has the calculator up on it. So this is 1.5 times 1.8 divided, so once again, 1.5 times 1.8 divided one by 1.5. That obviously gives 1.8. And, um, right, well, 1.8 minus essentially over here 1.8, isn't it? So the result for portfolio X is a nice round zero, brilliant, something that I was hoping for because this allows me to easily explain what's going on here. Let me draw my standard uh, chart, um, standard at least when we're discussing uh, risk versus return. So on the um, vertical axis, I'm going to have the expected return and over here I'm going to have the level of risk but this time around you know even though in previous videos I was often referring to systematic risk and um, as depicted by uh, or denoted by beta this time I'm going to say total risk and uh, you know sigma is our um, symbol for total risk i.e. standard deviation and what I want us to appreciate is that over here we've got somewhere RF the return on the on the um, risk-free asset, okay, and um, obviously 
the risk-free asset has a sigma or a risk level of zero. And let's say over here, I'm going to have uh, somewhere the sigma on the portfolio being analyzed. In this case, it would be more specifically portfolio X, which had a sigma of 1.5. Okay, that was its risk level, its uh, standard deviation over here. Okay, and with this amount of standard deviation, this specific portfolio was generating a return of, well, we can see over here, of 2%. Cool. Let's see what this expression over here is trying to do. It's trying to measure, oh, okay, and let me also put in 0.5% as the level of the risk-free rate of return. It's trying to say, well, that this distance, the difference between 2 and 0.5, we could think about this 1.5, which is the sigma of the portfolio, as belonging here under refraction. So, it's relating this upward movement to this across movement. How much additional return are you getting for every uh, move along the risk axis in the right-hand direction? So more risk. For taking on more risk, how much excess return are you getting above the risk-free rate? And then scaling this by the specific standard deviation or the amount of mark or the amount of risk not market risk total risk which the market portfolio is exposing us to so that's over here the sigma of the market portfolio is accordingly higher and uh, what you've got over here is just the formula for extrapolating if you know the relationship between you know this and this is measured by the following slope, what would happen if you took on even more risk, even more total risk at total level of 1.8? Well, we would be at this point and we should be expecting a return of, well, 2.3%. Why is that? Well, obviously, if we move across from a level of zero risk to 1.5% standard deviation or total risk, this gives us an additional 1.5% excess above the risk-free rate of return. So the relationship is very simple. Plus one, plus one, one for one. And we move across to 1.8, that should give us, well, 1.8% above the risk-free rate. What this expression is basically showing us is that our portfolio with its level of return and its level of risk is very much rightly priced in comparison with the relationship shown by the market portfolio in terms of its excess risk and its standard deviation. And as long as we are on this line, uh, our portfolio lies on this line, we're going to get a difference of exactly zero. So what this is telling us is that X, or performance of X, maybe let me write this down here, performance of X matches the performance of the market portfolio on a risk-adjusted basis. But be careful, the risk here we're talking about is total risk. It's no longer a uh, systematic risk only, it's total risk. Okay, let's have a look on, uh, let's have a look at the other ones, right? Uh, because we're, this isn't definitely the answer to the question yet. We need to have a closer look at portfolio Y. So maybe let's, let me do this over here. We've got some space. Same uh, logic. We take the return. So 4.5%, uh, we deduct the risk-free rate, which was 0 0.5, and we multiply by the standard deviation of this uh, market portfolio, so that's um, 1.8 still. 
and we divide by the standard deviation of the portfolio Y itself. So that was 2.5. So I guess for the future, it may be easier to think about this, you know, this excess divided by the standard deviation as the slope here multiplied later by the standard deviation of the market portfolio. So as to do a bit of extrapolation or interpolation, as is the case in over here, because over here, the standard deviation of portfolio Y is going to lie, you know, up here on the right hand side. And we deduct uh, this RM minus RF. So that's still 2.3 minus 0 0.5. Let's see what this gives. Well, it's going to give, let me get my calculator app uh, in front of me. Looking for it, here it is. So 4.5 minus 0 0.5 divided by 2.2 but times 1.8 okay um minus open bracket 2.3 minus 0 0.5 close bracket so i get a bit of an excess here and this is 1.47 positive and um if i wanted to write down the component parts obviously this, just like before, this gives 1.8 because it's the same term as before, whereas this one is um, a little bit higher. It was 3.27. Now, this is positive m squared. So I'm going to write down that y outperforms the market portfolio on a risk-adjusted basis. Okay, what's basically what basically this is saying is for portfolio Y, the relationship between its standard deviation, which is obviously somewhere here, it's 2.2, and its actual return, which is, you know, up here, 4%, is such that it lies on a steeper uh, line. And if the market portfolio, given its level of standard deviation where to lie on this line it would generate 3.27 percent of excess return above the risk-free rate whereas in reality it only generates 1.8 and what m squared is showing you is this excess over here so to speak so if we were to scale the risk of this this portfolio downwards to the level exhibited by the market portfolio it would still be outperforming the market portfolio on a risk adjusted in this case risk scaled down basis with portfolio x we were scaling the risk up to the level of risk which or total risk which the market portfolio was exposing us to this is what we mean by risk adjusted basis and let's do this <coughs> finally for portfolio z so, for Z, hardly have any space here, but let's try. The return on this one was 6.2%. Um, and uh, the risk-free rate, obviously, is 0 0.5. Okay, let's apply the logic of scaling this by the uh, horizontal distance, sorry, over here, which is 4% for uh, portfolio Z and uh, multiplying by the level of risk which the market portfolio is exposing us to that's 1.8 and obviously deducting once again this 2.3 minus 0 0.5 that's going to be constant so 6.2 minus 0 0.5 that's 5.7 divided by 4 okay times 1.8 okay this gives 2.8 five six percent this term and obviously this is still 1.8 so 2.56 minus 1.8 this equals 0 0.765 um, and this is still excess performance so z 
also outperforms, right? Just like why uh, the um, the market portfolio on a risk-adjusted basis. You know, Z is another portfolio where we've got more standard deviations, so we would be lying to the very right-hand side of everything here. You know, with uh, with uh, with the portfolio Z exhibiting a standard deviation of as much as four percent, and obviously having it uh, accordingly high return as well and once again it lies on a steeper line it's just not as steep as uh, as the one for uh, for y so z would be probably somewhere here in between the uh, y and the um and the uh, x however it's all about scaling back scaling down to where we would be if this was um the same level of risk as the market portfolio and you're looking for the highest figure this uh, outperformance, which seems to be portfolio Y. Why? So this is answer B.